Today we found out that a major player at E3 2021 has had its entire press conference leaked. This is unprecedented. So let's just get this out of the way right now. A major uh, person out there, a major journalist, did announce on Twitter that a press conference has fully leaked. And there's been speculation happening a lot over the last, I don't know, I'd say, you know, handful of hours over who is the leaker. Is it Microsoft? Is it Nintendo, Sega, Bandai Namco, Square Enix, etc.? Which company at E3? And a lot of people said, oh, it has to be Sony, which is interesting since the guy said specifically it's an E3 2021 leak. Sony's not at there. Now, Sony is going to be presenting something or some sort of games at the Summer Game Fest happening on June 10th, but they are not actually an active participant in E3, so it can't be Sony. So the first guess was obviously Microsoft, and the person responded and said, no. So then another person named Pixelpar uh, went out there and said, said, hey, just FYI, it's not Nintendo. Now, the big thing with Pixelpar is I don't actually trust him as an industry insider. He has gotten so many things wrong over the years. We don't even cover his rumors and leaks at this channel anymore and won't until he starts to get a lot more correct. Let's just say the distance between the validity of Samus Hunter and the validity of this uh, of Pixel Par, I mean, they might as well just be on opposite ends of the spectrum at this point. But uh, one company we do have to talk about, and one company we now know has been confirmed by Imran Khan, along with several other trusted uh, journalists, is Square Enix. It does appear that the entire press conference for E3 2021 for Square Enix has leaked. Now, not leaked in the sense that you can find private streams of it somewhere and watch the entire press conference for yourself, but leaked so much in that a media member or somebody behind the scenes was shown the press conference and then leaked it to all other media members behind the scenes. Essentially, the Gotakos, the IGNs, uh, the Screen Rants, the, the, the VGCs, all the major uh, you know outlets out there uh, that cover video games have probably now seen the entire press conference for Square Enix. And that is why we have not seen it leak online entirely because these people are trying to obviously pick out what news stories can we kind of slowly leak from this thing. And it looks like one of the first ones, major ones to come out, is a brand new Final Fantasy game that is supposedly exclusive for PlayStation 5. Now, it's not a big deal that this is happening in so much that it does appear that Sony has locked down uh, games such as Final Fantasy to be exclusive IP uh, for their platforms moving forward, although there'll probably still be some spinoffs. But this particular one's interesting because Nobody saw this coming. We all know about the brand new Final Fantasy game already announced coming exclusively to PlayStation 5. We all know about the update to Final Fantasy 7. So this one's really going to catch people out of left field. But before we get into the, the other details on that, we got to talk about why this is such a big deal to have this come out. We have never had an entire conference leak in this way. Now, Nintendo has had their E3s and Nintendo Directs spoiled, but never in the fashion where we're getting the actual trailers. We're getting to actually see the entire presentation early. That's what's happened here, and that's what makes it so surprising. Is it's it's literally this is what Square is showing you at E3. Now maybe now that it's leaked to the media, maybe they end up throwing in some last minute changes and some surprises, and it's possible the media might hold back some information. As an example, now that we have know this Final Fantasy game is coming, what else do we know is going to be in this press conference? Probably another look at at, at well project. Triangle Strategy, which we know is coming to Switch. Square Enix has had success on Switch with Bradley Default 2 recently as well. So I'm guessing that Square Enix is likely going to be ramping up support for Switch, possibly even like with some like late Neo ports or, or something like that. But again, this is all speculation at this point because this stuff's going to come out over the next couple of weeks. I feel like there's going to be conversations between media members behind the scenes on what they're jointly going to leak little tidbits about uh, from this conference. Like the PlayStation uh, 5, you know, ex new exclusive Final Fantasy game coming out, all the outlets seem to be talking about it at the same time. So I think they're all going to be working together to decide how they want to address these leaks and how they want to leak it out. And yeah, it does take one bad apple for the entire thing to end up getting out to the internet. One bad apple before we see all these trailers early. So be on the lookout if you're very interested in what's happening to Square Enix and you want to find out before they present it. It's possible that links and trailers and other things might appear over time. But if you don't want Square Enix's conference spoiled for you, kind of sorry because uh, as things happen that will be announced specific for Nintendo, we are going to talk about that. Today, it's a, it's a, a 
Final Fantasy game for PlayStation 5, but tomorrow it could be something for Nintendo Switch, the next day something for Microsoft, could be something that's just PC, could be for mobile, who really knows, right? Except for the people that have seen it. So I have not actually seen this full thing myself. It's possible somebody in the industry might share it with me and know if they do, I will not be posting images or posting trailers from it. Uh, maybe I'll confirm that I have seen it um, in, in some way that doesn't give away how I've seen it, uh, but I'm not going to uh, do anything otherwise. So I do know some people in the journalism field that might be willing to maybe let me in on it, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see because ultimately this is all on Square Enix, right? Square Enix didn't send this out to all the media members and go, yeah, here you go, here's our conference early, don't talk about anything. They're not stupid. It's likely one employee at Square shared it with one of his buddies in the media and it just mass spread from there uh, and it is what it is. Uh, so far, the only announcement to come out of it is pretty fire and pretty exciting, especially if you're a PlayStation 5 fan and you love JRPGs. But for everyone else, obviously we're on the tip of our toes waiting. Okay, so this is what you're talking about today. What are you going to be talking about tomorrow? What are you going to be talking about next week? Because we now know the entire conference is actually out there. So about that Final Fantasy game, it's called, apparently going to be called Final Fantasy Origins, and it is going to be based in the world of the original Final Fantasy uh, setting, the very first game. It's going to have gameplay that's going to invoke feelings of things like Neo, uh, but it's very clearly, after you see the footage, not Neo. It's its own 3D action-adventure style game, which is interesting since Final Fantasy's already sort of gone that action-adventure style with the action RPGs, I guess they still call them RPGs, uh, you know, with the later entries, including Final Fantasy VII Remake, which definitely goes much more action RPG style than the old turn-based RPG style of JRPGs in general, like we've seen with Octopath Traveler, Bravely Default 2, and all that, all that stuff, kind of invoking those classic feelings. That's not the way Final Fantasy has been for quite some time. Uh, so, yeah, it, it looks really, really impressive, apparently, and I guess it should. Final Fantasy games have always been kind of lookers, and it's just impressive that this game's happening when we already know about the new Final Fantasy VII content coming this year and the new Final Fantasy game that's supposed to release before the end of this year. So to have this spin-off game that might spin off its own Final Fantasy series off of it, also in the works, I don't know if it's coming this year, but it's in the works, uh, is pretty impressive from Square. They're definitely focusing a lot on Final Fantasy, and it being exclusive means, well, one reason they're focusing a lot is because Sony is giving them those fat checks and making it rain all over Square Enix's head Carters, right? They're just dousing in that Sony money. And I can't blame them because if Sony wanted to come around and pay me millions of dollars to turn my channel into Sony Prime or PlayStation Prime, you know what? I might have to consider that a bit. I got a I got a family. I wouldn't mind being set up for life. But we'd probably still sneak in Nintendo references and they cancel the channel. So, that being said, uh, I do want to thank you guys so much for tuning into this. As you see, we do have a new audio setup today. If you watch any of my prior videos, you know that we usually have that traditional, uh, you know, nice microphone in front of us. Trying out this lavalier setup. This is a setup we are planning to use in the future for podcasts and, and other things, and maybe every video moving forward if it turns out well. Uh, this is a professional setup. This was a very expensive. Uh, lavalier set up for, to, to make this work, but I'm doing this because I want you guys to be able to see my face. Enough covering my face with the microphone, right? A lot of YouTubers do that, and that's fine. I'm trying to put on a show here, all right? A show. I want to turn. I want to dance. I want to boogie, be able to do whatever I want, and turn my face, and you be able to hear me just fine. No more volume going up and down, in and out, and having to try to fix that all in post. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch each and every single one of you in the next video. Also, P.S., uh, we are going to live stream tonight, but it's not going to happen until like 10 p.m., and it's going to be a shorter stream because uh, the Milwaukee Bucks playoff games tonight. So I got some, some, some playoff games to watch. All right? I'll catch you guys in the next video.